Abracadabra. I was just um, practicing my LARPing. Welcome to today's tutorial for The Resistance, Avalon. Have you heard of the game The Resistance? Well, The Resistance Avalon is that game with a medieval reskin and some additional rules. Some people love space themes, other people love medieval themes. So it just makes sense to sell two copies of your game. More cash monies, cha-ching, 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 game developers, that's what I'm talking about. If you haven't heard of The Resistance, well, I'm about to tell you what's up. In the Resistance Avalon, you and your friends take on the roles of followers of King Arthur, who have been tasked with protecting the land. But your group has been infiltrated. Some of you are secretly minions of the murderous Mordred. The fate of the realm will depend on whether you can identify which players are evil before it's too late. Through the game, you'll nominate teams of players to go on very important quests. But if you bring an evil player along, your quest is almost certainly doomed to failure. If too many quests fail, the good guys lose, and the minions of Mordred kill you all and feed you to the crows, at the same time replacing your glorious monarchy with a tyrannical democratic republic. But luckily, Arthur has the kinda powerful Merlin on his side, who can use his magical crystal ball like some minority report shit to figure out who the bad guys are. But, although Merlin projects the appearance of a spry youth, he is really a frail old man, which makes it particularly easy for the minions of Mordred to kill him off if they can figure out who he is. And if that happens, the bad guys win anyway. F you Merlin! Democracy forever! So how exactly do you win or lose this game? I just explained that to you. Are you guys not paying attention at all? Seriously, why do I make these videos? To reiterate, it mainly depends on these very important quests. Your group will perform up to five of these quests over the course of the game. If the evil team wins three quests, then they win the game immediately. If the good guys win three quests, then they win the game. Well, once they pass through the gauntlet of Merlin assassination shenanigans that I just talked about. Getting prepped. All right, peasants. Follow along and you'll have your game set up in no time at all. They didn't really have clocks in the medieval era, or really a concept of time, so that makes the no time bit a little easier. First, choose the right tableau for your number of players. You'll use this tableau to track your quest success and failures, as well as which round of voting you're in over the course of the game. It also helpfully tells you how many players to bring along on each quest, as well as how many good and evil character cards to play with for this number of players. Now it's time to choose those character cards. Start with Merlin, who's on Arthur's team, and the Assassin, who's on Mordred's team. These characters must be in every game. Then add characters to each team until you're at the proper number for each side. By default, the other characters are pretty boring, just regular old followers of Arthur or Mordred, respectively. However, if you're feeling really adventurous, you can swap out a few of these boring characters for super cool optional characters to add more intrigue to the game or to slightly change the balance of good and evil. We'll come back to these optional characters a bit later on. For now, once you've selected your set of characters, shuffle them up and deal them out, one to each player. Each player secretly looks at their own character card. You can't show your card to anyone else ever, so don't do it. Let's deal with the rest of these assorted pieces. Give a vote approved and a vote rejected card to each player. Get your team tokens and quest success and fail markers and quest success and fail cards ready near the middle. Put the round marker on round one. Randomly select a leader and give them the leader token. Set up complete! Okay villagers, close your eyes. There's now something like a night phase so that the bad guys can get to know each other and Merlin can get to know the bad guys. You'll likely need to choose a responsible player to narrate this process. First, everyone closes their eyes. Now, all the evil players open their eyes and look at each other so they know who's on their team. Then, they close their eyes again. Now, the evil players stick out their thumbs and Merlin opens his eyes. He looks at the thumbs to identify the evil players and then closes his eyes. The evil players put their thumbs away and then everyone opens their eyes. The game is now afoot! Now, it's just about time to start letting you make your own decisions, for better or for worse. This game is played in up to five rounds, each of which has two phases, choosing a team and going on the quest. Choosing a team. 
This entire phase is designed for lots and lots of arguing. <coughs> I mean, civil discussion. This is the moment that all of your finely honed skills of bluffing, tricking, persuasion, diplomacy, and mind reading have been waiting for. You'll get the privilege of participating in copious freeform discussion before, during, and after every part of this phase. It's as terrible and amazing as it sounds. I'm gonna take a quick official rules break to highly recommend that you play with our number one house rule, tell a story. For starters, establish the setting, including the goals of the good and evil factions in your game. Use the standard medieval setting if you want, but if you're feeling really ambitious, why not set your game in a completely different scenario, like at a pool party, all the characters are dinosaurs, or in the future. Now, once you have a setting, each leader can come up with a quest description to go along with each proposed quest. And each quest will fit into the narrative of the setting. This time, I propose a quest to find the Holy Grain, once found, we shall mix it with the holy water and bake it in the holy crock pot. Who's with me? We really do find that this enriches the game and gets all the players more invested. It's also a great way to build up some inside jokes for your group. Okay, okay, back to the rules. To start this phase, you look at the next quest slot on the tableau to see how many characters will participate in this quest. After vigorous discussion, the current leader, the player with the leader token, nominates a quest team by handing out the appropriate number of team tokens to each player on the proposed team. The leader will probably choose themselves to go on the mission, but they don't have to. Once the selection is finalized, and after some more vigorous discussion, every player will choose whether to approve or reject the proposed quest team. To vote, each player secretly chooses either their vote approved or vote rejected cards, and then all players simultaneously reveal which vote they've chosen. If a majority of players have approved the quest team, move on to the next phase and start the quest. If there's a tie or the majority voted against the quest team, better luck next time. Pass the leader token one player clockwise and start this phase over. If there are five failed votes for a quest team in a row, then the evil team immediately wins the game. Yes, the whole game. Don't let this happen. It's really quite embarrassing. Pro tip. Use the vote marker to keep track of which vote you're on for this quest. That's what it's designed for. That's why it's called the vote marker. Partaking in a glorious quest. So, you've finally agreed on a team to take on a quest. About damn time, Jesus! Let's get some loot! Give each player participating in the quest a quest fail card and a quest success card. Each questing player must now play one of these cards face down in the center and discard the other one also face down in a designated area. If you're on the good team, there's no choice here. You must play a quest success card. If you're on the evil team, you do have a choice. You can play a quest failure card to ensure the failure of the quest, or you can play a quest success card to play the long game and build up the other's trust in you. On some tableaus, there are quests that require two failures, so watch out for those. Once all players have chosen, shuffle both the played cards and the discarded cards to anonymize the results. Now is the moment of truth. Flip over all the played cards. All successes? Nice work! The good guys pulled it off. But if there are any fails in the pile, this quest was an absolute failure in every way possible. I told you guys not to trust Uncle Frank. I haven't seen such a shifty look in his eyes since that last time we were in Bermuda. Whether you failed or succeeded, record the result on the tableau. Once there have been three successful or three failed quests, you're done with questing. Move on to the end of game rules. If you're not quite there yet, move the round token to the next slot, move the leader token one player clockwise, and start the next round. Choose that mission team wisely next time. The end. So, you've gone on several quests and had either three successful or three failed ones? Three failed quests? That means all the players on the evil team win immediately. Three successful quests, on the other hand, not bad. I honestly didn't expect you to do this well. The evil players must have been sleeping on the job. Well, in any case, the evil players get one more chance to redeem themselves. The evil players reveal their identities, if it wasn't obvious already. They now have a moment to converse, to try to come to an agreement on who exactly is Merlin. The evil player with the assassin role then chooses one of the good players, who reveals their role card. If it was Merlin, Merlin dies, and the evil team wins. Maybe Merlin should have done a better job of hiding his identity. Maybe try shaving that beard off next time, Merlin. It's a giveaway. If the assassin player chooses incorrectly, the chosen player dies anyway. The assassin is really good at her job. But their sacrifice was not in vain. All the good players win. Avalon is found and Arthur parties on. 
optional characters. As I mentioned earlier, there are some flavorful optional characters that you can substitute in for the boring ones to kick things up a notch. Choose the ones your group likes best. Percival is a good character. He gets to learn the identity of Merlin at the beginning of the game. Morgana is an evil character. She appears as another Merlin at the start of the game to make Sir Percival's life a little bit harder. Mordred is an evil character. He appears to be a good guy when Merlin learns the identity of the evil characters. Oberon is a weak evil character. He does not open his eyes when the other evil characters do. You can also play with the optional Lady of the Lake token, which will pass around between the players, allowing them to learn the allegiances of others. So that's Babylon, the game where you just keep talking? I guess somebody thought filibustering should be a game? So that's Get Off My Lawn, the game where you bring some good old-fashioned smackdown to those pesky neighborhood children. Get off my lawn, dagnabbit! So that's Pokemon, the game of slavery and exploitation, made cute! So that's Avalon, the AP European History Study Aid. Stay tuned to watch us get medieval playing this with alcohol, but don't forget to subscribe to us to learn the difference between an African and a European swallow. And like this video if your favorite color is blue. No, I mean yellow! <laughs> I'll see you next time, but until then, play responsibly. An evil unicorn. Okay. Well, depends on your perspective. Says the evil guy. <laughs> Morally ambiguous. Morally ambiguous, you know. Quest, 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 quest,